name is Olivia. I'm a graduate student at Washington State University and today I'm here to talk to you a little bit about the Shell and Tube Heat Exchanger Low Cost Desktop Learning Module. So the first thing we're going to go over if you're following along with our project worksheet is we're going to go over the information on page one. Um, so the first thing I'd like you to do, um, take a look at this heat exchanger and draw what you expect the flow patterns to be for the hot and cold water and then also go ahead and try to label the inlets and outlets for the hot and cold water. So take a minute to do that and then um, come back and continue watching the video. All right, so now that you've drawn the flow patterns you expect to see, we're gonna talk a little bit about these quantities down at the bottom of page one and make sure that we're all on the same page with those. So the first thing we wanna talk about is the number of tubes in the heat exchanger. Um, so if you look at the module here, we can count the number of stainless steel tubes in the heat exchanger. So you should see one, two, three, four tubes total in this shell and tube heat exchanger. The next thing we wanna write down is the number of tubes per pass. And so if you look closely over here, um, we have the hot water, it's gonna come in at the bottom here, and then it's gonna go through these two tubes at the bottom, and then it's gonna come up through this channel and go through these two tubes at the top, and it's gonna come out the outlet here. And so that means we have two tubes per pass. So a pass is when water um, in the tubes changes direction. So we have one pass down at the bottom, it comes up, changes direction, we have our second pass at the top here. And then our next quantity is the number of baffles in the heat exchanger. So if you look close, you can see baffles here. Baffles are these clear plastic pieces that go vertically up and down the shell. And baffles help direct the flow of the cold fluid up and down in a serpentine pattern through the exchanger. And so we can count the number of baffles in this exchanger. One, two, three, four, five, six total baffles in this shell and tube exchanger. And then the last thing we want to record on our worksheet is the number of shell passes. And so we have one shell pass in this heat exchanger. So we count this whole area where the cold fluid is serpentining back and forth as a shell pass. Okay, so we're gonna start doing some of our experiments with this heat exchanger in a second here. Um, I'd like to explain a little bit about the setup here, what we have going on in all of our parts and components of the setup. So as you can see, we have two beakers here. We have one with purple blue fluid um, on my left, and that has cold water in it. Um, this has a pump in it. It's going to pump this cold water into the shell and tube heat exchanger. Um, it's gonna start at the inlet on the bottom here, and it's gonna go through the shell and come out the cold water exit at the top into this beaker at the back. Similarly, we have a beaker full of hot water. Um, it's dyed red. There's another pump in here. And this is gonna flow into the inlet for the hot water down here. It's gonna go through the tubes and it's gonna come up, out up here at the hot water exit. And so what we're gonna do for our experiments is we're going to measure the inlet and outlet temperatures of the hot water. Um, so first we're gonna measure the inlet temperatures, we're gonna run the exchanger, and then we're gonna measure the temperatures in the outlet beaker. The other thing we're gonna record is the volume of water in both the outlet beakers, and we're gonna record how long we flowed water through the heat exchanger, and with both of those pieces of information, we can calculate the flow rate of the hot and cold water. So if you're following along with the worksheet, we're gonna do experiment one on page two. And so we have fresh, hot, and cold water. We're gonna let it flow through the exchanger, and then we're gonna measure the outlet temperatures and the volume of the time. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and measure the inlet temperature of our cold water. And that looks like it is 19 degrees Celsius. Next, we're gonna measure the inlet temperature of the hot water. Inlet temperature of our hot water today is 50.1 degrees Celsius. And so I'm gonna turn the pumps on in a second here. I want you to actually watch the flow patterns in the heat exchanger the first time we run this and see if your predictions on page one of the worksheet were correct. And so I'm also going to get my stopwatch ready so we can time how long our water was flowing. Okay, so I'm turning the pumps on in three, two, one, and I'm gonna stop my stopwatch or start my stopwatch when the water gets into the outlet beakers. Okay, and 
we're just gonna let this run for a few seconds until our inlet beakers are almost empty. All right, so our beakers are almost empty, so I'm gonna go ahead and stop the pumps, and I'm gonna stop my stopwatch. And so um, we're gonna measure the outlet temperatures of the water now and see how the temperatures change um, versus the inlet. So first we're gonna do the hot water. So our hot water outlet temperature is now 43.1 degrees Celsius. And our cold water outlet temperature, 24.3 degrees Celsius. Okay, so you should have noticed that the temperature of our hot water actually decreased when it went through the exchanger and the temperature of our cold water has increased. And so that is because the hot water is exchanging heat with the cold water as the cold water contacts the exterior of the tubes that the hot water is flowing through. Um, so we have um, heat transfer from the hot to the cold fluid um, based on the temperature difference between those two fluids um, in the exchanger. Okay, so next thing we're gonna measure is the volume of water in both of our outlet beakers. So the volume of our cold water is 650 milliliters. The volume of our hot water is 670 milliliters. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna record in table one is the time that we were in the heat exchanger, and that was 28.86 seconds for this run. Okay, so hopefully as you watch the flow patterns, um, you saw that again, um, cold fluid comes in down at the bottom of the shell and it serpentines around back and forth across the baffles, comes out up here at the outlet and goes into the outlet beaker. Um, hot water comes in down here at the entrance um, to the tubes, flows through this bottom set of two tubes first, comes up and then flows through the second set of two tubes and then goes into the outlet beaker. And so if you predicted that correctly on your worksheet the first time, um, we can move on. If you need to correct your prediction, go ahead and do that on page one um, so that you have the flow patterns correctly labeled for the heat exchanger. Okay, so we're gonna keep moving along the worksheet. Um, so next we're gonna do experiment two and we're gonna look at the effect of the temperature driving force between the hot and cold fluid on the heat transfer rate in this experiment. And so what we're gonna do is we're actually going to reuse the water we used for the first experiment. We're gonna put it into the outlet beakers. So again, if you remember what we just measured, um, the temperature of the cold water at the inlet is gonna be higher now than it was um, in the first experiment and the temperature of the hot water is going to be lower. So that means we have a smaller difference between the temperatures of the hot and cold water for experiment two than we did for experiment one. Okay, so we're gonna record the same quantities for this experiment as we did for the first experiment. We're gonna start again by measuring the temperature of the cold water at the inlet. And we have a temperature of 22.9 degrees for experiment two for the cold water inlet. Temperature of our hot water inlet this time is 42.6 degrees Celsius. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna turn on the pumps. I'm gonna start my timer when we have water reach the outlet beakers. And then after we're done, we're gonna measure these temperatures, um, the volume and record the time that we were running the exchanger. All right, so we're turning the pumps on. And again, we're just gonna let this flow until our inlet beakers are almost empty. All right, we're gonna stop the pumps and stop my timer. All right, so we're gonna measure the outlet temperature of the hot water. And it looks like we have an outlet temperature of 38.3 degrees Celsius for experiment two. Outlet temperature of our cold water for this experiment is 26.6 degrees Celsius. The time we ran the heat exchanger for this experiment is 31.23 seconds. 
the volume for our cold water is 550 milliliters and the volume for our hot water 690 milliliters okay so hopefully you noticed um, that the temperature change of the hot and cold fluids in this experiment was actually less than it was in experiment one and so what that tells us is that less heat was transferred from the hot to the cold fluid in this experiment and the reason for that is because we started with a lower driving force for heat transfer and so heat transfer rate depends on several things in this heat exchanger um, first is the area which we didn't change between the two experiments um, second is the overall heat transfer coefficient which is dependent on the flow rate of both the fluids and the heat exchanger we didn't change that either and then the other thing it depends on is the log mean temperature difference between the hot and cold fluids so that is what we changed between experiment one and experiment two we lowered the log mean temperature difference between the hot and cold fluids um, therefore we have a lower heat transfer rate and we're going to see a lower um, temperature change for the fluids when they go through the heat exchanger all right everyone so i hope you learned something about shell and tube heat exchangers today through watching this video we talked about flow patterns in this shell and tube heat exchanger we measured temperatures at the inlet and the outlet for the hot and cold fluids we saw that heat is transferred from the hot to the cold fluid in this heat exchanger based on the temperature difference between the fluids and we talked about the effect of the temperature driving force on the heat transfer rate so thanks for watching hope you have a great day and bye.